going on, my fellow A plusers? It is I, your more phenomenal host, as always, Adam Perez. I'm back once again with a brand new video as we are set to get into Don Brothers episode number six, a series that I continue to enjoy week in and week out. Six for six, six out of six, if you will, for me in regards to episodes that I've thoroughly enjoyed. I've had several people over the past couple of weeks ask me, Adam, should I go ahead and check out Don Brothers? I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of Zen Kaiser, really rubbed me the wrong way. So I've had some distance between me and Don Brothers. And you know what I've told them? Do yourselves a favor and check out this series. I think you'll be thoroughly pleased. Like myself, somebody who wasn't pleased with Zen Kaiser, this has been a very refreshing take, if you will, on a Super Sentai season. So the fact that it has been relatively creative, great attention to detail, amazing story, and some really brilliant characters, I have definitely have been recommending and suggesting this to everybody that I've certainly known, especially if they felt some type of way about Zen Kaiser. And episode six um, doesn't disappoint whatsoever, man. Um, I love the, the partnering of characters in here. The um, seeing Kiji brother opposite Momotaro in here really worked for me. I definitely have a lot more questions than I think I got answers, but I am thankful that I wind up getting answers in here. But I do enjoy the mystery aspect of it and seeing it slowly unravel as the season progresses. Bringing in a brand new writer has just breathe new life i felt like into super sentai uh making this series feel rather unique and original uh onto itself and not necessarily because of the gimmicks in regards to the avatars and things like that but truly the attention to the story uh has really gone a long way and has made the past six weeks rather enjoyable to be perfectly honest with you so again while this series does a great job of adding more questions and confusing me a little bit further each episode, I am thankful that we at least did get some questions, I'll get some answers out of the way, specifically when it comes to the Jin sequence and scene that we had in here as Saru brother and Oni sister are certainly looking for some more answers. They try to acquire them from Momotaro, but that doesn't get them anywhere. I think his answer was like, oh, you'll know what to do when the time comes. I mean, that's, you know, that's really a non-answer, but whatever. But Jin decides to go ahead and let them in on a little bit of information after he hits them with the quote of Momo is the answer um, to what the questions that they certainly have, how that connects, not quite sure. But he does give us some insight, at least in regards to a couple of things here. One, the cere uh, Cerebrains, or the cer yeah, Cerebrans, or Cerebrains, however you want to refer to them as. Uh, the villains of this ep uh, of this season, Sonoi, Sonoza, and Sononi. He mentions that they're inhabitants of a higher plane of existence, uh, and he also mentions the idea that the digital demons that we've been referring to in them as he says they are a certain type of people. Uh, he says a certain type of people uh, possessed by intense desires. They wind up turning into hit. hit Hitatsuki, Hitatsuki is what they're called, Hitatsuki, um, so not digital demons, but Hita Hitatsuki, and the uh, Cerebrains um, are responsible for eliminating them, it did get a little confusing when he started getting into how the Cerebrains world works, but in the notes I said their world survives the Cerebrains world survives off the actions of people's brains and their minds. When the desire takes over the mind, then it winds up disrupt, disrupting their world. So they must eliminate the Hitotsu, Hitotsuki, which makes sense, right? Because anytime that we've seen these Hitotsukis pop up, the Cerebrains have definitely been there to go ahead and eliminate them. Now, not necessarily eliminate them properly, right? Because we do see that there's clearly two different ways. The way that the Cerebrains do, which completely eliminate the Hitatsu, Hitatsuki along with the actual person. And of course, when the Don brothers um, use their maneuvers and their weapons, it winds up separating them so that the actual human survives. But that deep desire of theirs, that Hitatsuki, boom, is out of there. So I found it was pretty interesting in here. I'm um, getting to understand why they do 
what they do. Um, I believe the Cerebrains in here even mentioned the idea that there is a council. So it feels as though maybe there's even higher ups above them, if you will, also. Um, and it does seem as though they have a very big fascination in regards to the emotions that the humans are certainly going through despite lacking the true understanding of what those meanings are. Uh, it kind of does remind me a little bit of Yodana from Kara Major in the sense that she doesn't really know emotions. She had to learn them in her Yodana special, you know what I mean? Uh, whereas here, I mean, we literally have Sononi and Sonoza, um literally walking up to people, asking them to, you know, is this a feeling of love? Uh, what is it? Sonoza, I think, is trying to figure out when's the right time to laugh how you know what's the purpose of laughing sort of thing uh and get, even get an opportunity to see him have a great battle with um uh momotaro in here was great uh, especially considering the fact that don momotaro loves to laugh himself definitely got himself a little bit of a laughing lesson uh in that ass kicking that he wind up getting in this episode but it is fascinating to me to see the lack of emotion the stoicness of their faces, the lack of emotion on a lot of their faces, to be honest with you, um, and their knowledge to want to learn how to utilize it. Um, and I think the idea too, going back to the previous episode and in this one too, when we see the paintings and one of the questions like I had was I was trying to figure out what's the references to the paintings. And I think it's because of the fact that and I think he might have mentioned it in here that maybe it is an expression of feelings and emotions and things like that. Um, and for a group of people who don't understand them and are trying to study them, the idea of looking at a culture's art is probably a really great way to understand those um, kind of expressions. So I, I found that really interesting and we certainly learned a significant amount uh, about them here in this episode. The other thing that we learned from Jin though was due to Sorrow Brothers um, questioning and inquiring about, hey, listen, I'm gonna roll with you in regards to believing in you and sticking around with your beliefs and fighting for the same reason that you want. But if I ever want to leave the Don Brothers, is that possible, right? And uh, he gets his answers um, and in regards to like the idea of departing the team. While Sorrow believes in the cause, he is curious if he can leave the cause if he wants. Um, he mentions, Jin mentions that points must be used. Points. You can use it to leave the Don brothers or you can use it to have any wish that you want which I find interesting, but he does say if you use the points, um, if you use them poorly, it will add to your misfortune. So you can use the points however you want to, but if you use them poorly, you will deal with the ramifications and the misfortune of them. And we got a perfect example of that when it comes to Kiji brother. Now, Jin also mentions in here, cause it, I wasn't the only one that was super confused. Because apparently Oni's sister asks the same question, right? About the points. What are these points? How do these points work? And what does Jin say? Speak to the administrator or speak to the admin in regards to that. And before he could say anything, he whisked them back to where they certainly were. If I have to, if I'm a betting man, if I have to make a prediction right now, I think Kaido is that admin. And I only say that because he clearly seems to know about the points, right? He references the points to Kiji brother in the beginning of this episode. And he also does so towards um, the very end, if you will, also, right? And in my notes, I says, what the are these points? And why does he have a chart showing points acquired? And that's exactly what we see with Kaido towards the end as he's looking at, he's got like a chart, a graph of all the um, Don brothers up there, all the points that they've certainly acquired for themselves. And he does reference the idea that Kiji brother has lost some of his, that his points have in fact lowered which would clearly show you, yes, Kiji brother, in fact, did use points for this particular episode to try and impress his woman. And unfortunately, misfortune certainly followed him wherever he went after that. So interesting take uh, how Kaido knows about the points. Again, that's the one thing that we talked about, right? Kaido comes across like he knows what's going on, like he already knows these people and understands the purpose and reasoning why these people have to meet and bump into each other 
in the first place, right? So the fact that he's keeping a chart and understanding all this, I definitely think he's the admin that Jin was certainly referring to in here. And the plot thickens in regards to Kaido's full involvement. So um, bring it on, man. Bring it on. But this episode, we got to talk about Keiji Brother along with Momotaro because in this particular episode, we had uh, Suyoshi, who is Kiji Brother, Suyoshi and his wife Miho um, getting ready for an award ceremony, award ceremony where Miho was uh, set to go ahead and be honored. But very last minute after they've gotten their ride there, he decides against going inside because of his own insecurities are kind of getting the best of him, thinking that his woman is so beautiful and so above him that he's almost an embarrassment to her if he's caught dead with her, if people start kind of seeing him, you know what I mean? So he's very much on this belief that she is too good for him and he's pretty much just sort of an embarrassment. And I gotta be honest with you, I did roll my eyes a little bit because I thought to myself, I was like, well, man, she clearly married you for a reason, right? Like she clearly sees something in you that she loves and she adores and she absolutely needs to have in her life in order for her to say yes. But the fact that he doesn't have any confidence in himself whatsoever, look, you don't need to give her a reason to doubt you or to cause her to leave because trust me when I say no confidence in yourself is a big sort of non-attractive trait when it comes to a woman, right? They do love a guy who certainly has some levels of confidence about themselves, but to the, 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 the limits in which um, Suyoshi is certainly putting him down, um, definitely not warranted uh, in regards to somebody who clearly doesn't believe in himself or doesn't believe he's good enough for the woman that he wind up marrying. Now, I did love the little joke towards the end of the episode when you know miho was kind of happy that he no longer took his promotional job because it was making him a bit of a dick um but i love the fact that she says i, I kind of like when you fail <laughs> like i kind of like when i'm a little bit above you or you're a little bit below me sort of thing uh because you, you act like a completely different person when you've got all that power certainly a little bit of a jab for sure but i I think it certainly was meant in the very loving way, not the fact that she loves a man that she can like walk all over sort of thing. I definitely don't think that's what she meant, but definitely a little marriage jab between those uh, between those two and just her getting her point across like, yeah, man, I just really did not like this personality that you recently had. Um, how Kiji Brother even activated the points, that I don't know. Do you just wish upon a star that you get good fortune and all of a sudden things happen to you and you deplete your points? Um, is there like a little magical lamp that you rub? Do you rub your avatar or your avatar changer and you get to make some wishes? I have no idea how the point system works, but I am interested to kind of see um, if they even showcase how Kiji Brother tapped into the, that uh, fortune that he certainly needed. And it's just like night and day in regards to their personalities. Um, getting to see him belittle Momotaro in here, talking about the idea of him being a delivery man, kind of being below him and whatnot. I love the fact that Momotaro just like pushes back against him, if you will, calling him. I think he even references the idea that he was weak, if I'm not mistaken. I think he looks at him and mentions the idea like, you've gotten weaker since the last time I've seen you. Uh, and in my notes, I put, ouch. Um, really showcasing you that at the end of the day, Momotaro is going to always continue to be truthful and considering the fact that he knows that this isn't Suyoshi. Uh, yeah, I can understand the point of him mentioning the fact that he's getting uh, a little bit weaker, but his misfortune definitely does catch up to him despite the limo, the pay raise, the job promotion. He really started pe treating people like shit, honestly. Uh, and unfortunately, his wife, something happens to his wife and he winds up going into the hospital. They don't really clarify what happened to her, just that she kind of passes out. I thought she fell into a coma or something like that for a minute, but um, uh, it looked pretty terrible at first. But she eventually comes around the moment that... Um, you know, Kiji Brothers' bad fortune winds up sort of running out, if you will. But I did love the moment that we wind up getting between him and Momotaro in here. The fact that he wants to try and challenge Momotaro to show that he's better than him, really trying to do everything that he can to try and impress his woman when at the end of the day, that's really what not what she wants whatsoever. I do find it interesting that we got ourselves three different variations of wrestling matches between them. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe we got... 
an arm wrestling match, a sumo wrestling match, and even a thumb wrestling match. And why Kiji Brothers sheds more clothing each time of an event? Like, why Homeboy is even shirtless in a thumb wrestling match? I've got no idea why, but I think it's absolutely hilarious uh, in the way that um, it wind up sort of taking place. But um it really worked for me, the, the the Momotaro stuff and the Kiji Brothers stuff, especially when Momotaro sends, you know, makes the comment of you and I are very much sort of both alike, you know. Um, I love his comparisons where I believe he said Kiji Brothers said that um, he wasn't good at anything, so therefore he was problem. I can't remember how he explained it. Like Momo said he was good at everything, and yet he was probably bad at this or something along those lines where it really lined up between him uh, along with Kiji brother. Um, but even seeing somebody like Mo Momotaro admit defeat that Kiji brother won because of the fact that he could never make a, a woman smile the way that he does. I am kind of curious as to what that means. I am kind of curious if it's a sense of, you know, um, because of his misfortune or his his good fortune being too good he can never see like that side of a person um does he just not have interest in women is that like a little bit of a clue into the inside of you know his uh, his particular lifestyle sort of thing I, look i just think momotaro was such a loner that his good fortune just really doesn't allow him to get close to truly anybody the way that he probably would like to right he, the homeboy doesn't have an idea of how to be happy so to be able to have another like woman in your life that gets you and to kind of get those, you know, those mutual connections and feelings, um, that's probably a really sad realization for somebody, man. I mean, I feel like the more and more I see Momotaro, there is a, a heaviness that I get on my heart for just the experiences that he's had or the lack thereof of experiences sort of in his life. And you can kind of see how those experiences have really shaped him to be sort of somebody that doesn't really express emotion so well or connect right i think even sorrow brother and only sister point out in this episode like you really need to understand people and how to talk to people better in that sense and i think that's definitely one of his downfalls for having such good fortune that uh, too much of a good thing can be a curse upon itself and be a bad thing, right? We definitely have heard that before, and it feels very much like in Momotaro's case, um, that's very much more a, a reality, if you will, right? So, you know, the idea of having somebody like Kiji Brother who feels like he doesn't have everything, but in reality, he really does. Uh, it is that lack of self self confidence and that doubt in himself that um, you know it's it's good to be able to see maybe Kiji brother hopefully overcome that type of thing in the past or in the future but I do like um, um, just how the similarities between Kiji brother along with Momo Taro definitely got pointed out in this particular week's episode but um, overall guys yeah I really enjoyed it the Kiji brother Momo Taro stuff really worked for me um, I, I'm still fascinated to see how Inu brother, how his wife and Kiji brother's wife may or may not be the same person. One of the things that I mentioned and I asked somebody one of the live viewer questions or I talked about last time was that when it comes to um, Miho along with uh, Suyoshi, I believe they've only been married like three or four months, right? But Inu brother did mention he was married like a year ago. These two women clearly have two different names, but they look alike. I didn't catch that they looked alike at first until I went back and rewatched it again, and everybody really pointed it out. So I, I do wonder if I, I do wonder if something happened between her and Inu brother a year ago. I think he said they they still have her. Um, I do wonder who he's referring to, if he's referring to the police or not, because I, I do wonder if they were married a year ago, that time period in between then and the KG brother marriage, I wonder if they put homegirl in like protective custody or something, you know, changed her identity. Maybe they thought that he was like too much of a fugitive, so they wanted to protect her. I have no idea. Um, and maybe she changed her name and got remarried. I, who certainly knows the story behind it, but I am interested to kind of see it all unravel and eventually get told to us. But uh, I'm loving what I'm seeing, guys. The action was great in here. One more time. We did 
get some Zuosier inspired enemies along with um, changes. I believe uh, Momotaro used his um, his av av avatar change, um, and he went into his avatar mode. So he did the uh, Zuo Alter change or the Zuo Alter mode, uh, which was interesting. I'm still not a big fan of that whole SD Topia sort of graphic, if you will. And then you add on top of it the blockiness of the Zuosier design. I really wasn't a fan of the Alter change here this week, but I, I did uh, get a kick out of the Zuosier. Uh, themes and inspirations for certain things here in this particular week's episode. Also, I will say this, going back to the Cerebrains real quick, I did find it interesting that when they talk to people, when that they're like that they blow into people's faces and it sometimes opens up or activates like a door um so it definitely lets me know that it feels like the Cerebrains are at least the ones calling out the Hitatsukis um in because i think sonoza makes contact with one of the nurses in this episode and is like oh wow you've got a, a lot of it inside of you or something bigger inside of you than i would have ever thought sort of thing i guess it's that desire to truly help people um and the fact that he blew in her face and the door opened and it looked like a hitatsuki inside the fact that it it comes out and engulfs her you know, for me, I'm assuming her her desire to help people was just so overwhelming that it wind up sort of turning into that. Um, I do wonder if like if everybody they blow in the face of activates like that or is it a test to kind of see like, do you have a deep desire deep down inside of you? And then when the monster pops itself up, it's like up. Oh, We've activated it. You know what I mean? We, we've brought it forth sort of thing. So I, I am um, I'm intrigued. More questions than answers, but I'm okay with that right now, six episodes in, because I'm really enjoying the pacing and just the level of storytelling that we're getting so far. But guys, remember, at the end of the day, these are just my A-plus opinions. I want to know yours. What did you guys think? Let your thoughts be known in the live chat or the comment section box below. And we'll definitely talk about this later on this weekend. And I'll see you guys next week. But until then, do me a big favor. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And keep it A-plus. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.